It's no secret that I personally drive a Geely Coolray Sport SE, and that car has truly impressed me. In fact, the entire lineup of Geely Philippines really does impress me. But now they came out with yet another car. It's a crossover that's slotted even below the Geely Coolray, and it is this car right here. This is the Geely GX3 Pro and the automatic comfort trim. Today, let's see if this car is any good and if it is as impressive or maybe even more impressive compared to the Geely Coolray and the rest of the Geely lineup. Looking at this, honestly, it's very different compared to the rest of the Geely lineup. You might say that it looks a little bit more dated. And the reason for that is that the GX3 Pro has been on sale and in production in China for a couple of years now. So this still uses the older design language. You don't have any of those sharp curves. You don't have any of that very futuristic geometry on it. It's all just very smooth curves. And you can really see that here at the hood, here at the headlamps, and even the grill. You're not gonna have your expanding Cosmos grill right here. You just have these like vertical slats on them. And for the lighting assembly, you even have this like blue ring thing. You might think that that's LED headlamps, right? Well, no, these are just for aesthetics and these are just projector halogens, but at least they are automatic and you even have DRLs too with this car. Now on the side of the vehicle, you can really see just how small this car is. It is in fact much smaller compared to a Geely Coolray. It's only about the size of a Toyota race. And what's pretty odd with this design here is when you open the door, it doesn't have the usual shape of a door. So you have this like dip right here and that makes way for this quarter window, which unfortunately does eat into visibility, even if you have that window because the A pillar is pretty thick. Now down below you have 16 inch rims painted in some sort of gunmetal paint. And I'm personally not a big fan of the look of it, but I don't know, some people might like it. These are wrapped in triangle tires. I kid you not, the brand of the tires is called Triangle, which is indeed pretty weird. You get these faux carbon accents on your wing mirrors and on top you even have roof rails. Your ground clearance for this car stands at 185 millimeters, which honestly is more than enough for light floods in Manila and for slightly rough terrain. Now, while the front and the sides look a little bit dated, I would say that Geely did a good job with the rear end. And I think that is down to one major aspect of it. Instead of giving you that plate with a recess that says Geely on it, Geely has decided to just spell out Geely for you right here in chrome bold lettering really does look a little bit more modern. Tail lamps, not LEDs, but they also look pretty nice. I like the shape of it. And instead of giving you like a very sporty, ricery spoiler, there's just a very subtle spoiler on the top. You even get a reverse fog light down below and they didn't give you fake exhausts. Now let's open up this tailgate. It's also pretty light. And right here you have around 400, 500 liters of space. You can even fold down those rear seats and you even have a false floor, which does contain a space saver spare tire. Now let's talk about its powertrain. Does it have the same amount of power as a Geely Coolray? Well, no, what you have here instead is the exact same powertrain you would get with a Geely M Grand. This is a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated gasoline engine with four cylinders instead of the Coolray's three making 103 horsepower and 142 Newton meters of torque paired to an eight simulated speed CVT. For fuel economy too, it does considerably better compared to the Geely Coolray. You can get around 10 kilometers per liter in heavy city traffic and up to 16 kilometers per liter when you are on the highway. Now we move inside the GX3 Pro and first we check the door thud. Surprisingly, that's probably the, one of the best door thuds I've ever heard in a car of its class. Usually I really wouldn't expect that to sound that good, but yes, it does. And anyway, in here, the very moment you sit inside, it's gonna feel very familiar. Why is that so? Well, it pretty much has the exact same dashboard layout as what you would get with the Geely M Grand. So your instrument cluster, that's the same. You even have that like center 3.5 inch screen and your infotainment screen is an eight inch touchscreen also with a reverse camera. But just like the M Grand, it still doesn't get Apple CarPlay nor Android Auto. There is this like easy connection car bit link that you can use, but nothing replaces Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Nonetheless, this screen is pretty responsive to use and you don't even need to fumble around with it just to operate your AC controls because you still get physical buttons and even the start stop button lifted right off the Geely M Grand. 
Now, for the materials, it truly isn't bad. Yes, there are like hard, cheap plastics, but that is what you would expect from a car of its class. But GV didn't just stop there because they made sure to make the fit and finish pretty good. For example, this uh, center handle right here, yeah, you can just like shake it on about and it doesn't creak at all. And here too on the side of the doors, you even have like some extra patterns on it just to kind of elevate the experience a little bit. That is attention to detail. And that has always been the thing that really impressed me with Geely. It really is the fit and finish of their interiors. Now your steering wheel too, despite the segment of this vehicle, it is leather wrapped with red stitching too. And you even get cruise control. Unfortunately though, you can only tell the steering wheel, but you can't really telescope it. So if you're like me and you have like short arms, well, this is a little bit of a hard reach. Now we move on towards the seats and they're also probably one of the most comfortable seats that you can get in a car of its class. The support is good. It's pretty firm. You have great bolsters on the side too, wrapped in leatherette, also with red stitching. And your shifter is very easy to use. Again, similar to the M Grand, you even get manual mode. But probably the biggest feature of the GX3 Pro is the addition of a sunroof. I mean, where can you find a car with a sunroof in its class? You truly cannot. This is game changing. Now, remember how I said earlier that there's this weird setup right here with the A-pillar? Well, once you're seated back here, yes, that really does eat into your visibility a lot. So honestly, that is one of my biggest complaints with this vehicle. Nonetheless, let's talk about its safety features. You get two airbags, you get ABS, you get stability control, and you even get hill descent control and hill start assist. Now for the rear seats, you first also check the door thud. Love it, best in its class, definitely. Once you are back here, you're also gonna be very impressed because despite your legroom not being the best, it still is pretty good for its class. And the same is true also for your headroom. But the biggest difference that I really see with this car compared to every single other car in its class is the comfort of the seats you get back here. Because usually what manufacturers do to increase the legroom here at the back for the second row passengers is make your seats ridiculously thin. I'm talking about supportless seats, seats with barely any thigh support, seats with barely any bolsterings. But for the GX3 Pro, it still is pretty good. The thigh support is more than reasonable. The backrest too, it doesn't feel too upright. And they even still give you some of those side bolsters. The material they use for it too, it's exactly the same as the front. So you have like this leatherette with red stitching. And the same is also true for the side of the doors. There's, they still have like these patterns on it that just elevates the experience despite being made out of somewhat cheap plastic. But I think one thing that the GX3 Pro does best too here at the back is kind of give you the option to seat a third passenger because there's also some cars in this class where it's exclusively a four-seater despite having a middle seat because those cars, despite having that middle seat, it doesn't come with a rear center headrest, but this car does. So if you really do need to squeeze in a third adult back here, it is possible. It's not the best because the car is pretty narrow, but yes, they're not gonna get whiplash injuries in the case of a collision. Now for toys, you barely have any of it. So you only have like a jug holder on the side and one USB port by the center console. So now we drive the Geely GX3 Pro and the first thing I'm gonna do is to give you an English language lesson. While the antonym of the word slow is fast and fast is too slow, just because something is not fast doesn't mean that it is slow and that is exactly the case for the Geely GX3 Pro. Because since you have that powertrain for the M Grand, you can expect it to perform pretty similarly to an M Grand. But the good thing is having this naturally aspirated engine means that you don't have any turbo lag and as long as you put this car into like sport mode and the very moment you step on that accelerator it really responds pretty quickly also the cvt transmission that they used instead of a dual clutch makes it a more comfort oriented vehicle it's a more relaxed vehicle so it doesn't have any aggressive simulated downshifts it just goes and yes you do have some rubber banding but it really isn't too bad the suspension is also geared towards comfort Comfort. And even if you go through rough roads or pretty high speed bumps, you're never going to be jarred inside the GX3 Pro. It, it, I wouldn't say it's bouncy, it's still a little bit firm, but the firmness that they give you is just enough firmness to make sure that no one gets motion sickness inside the car. But 
daily driving, this is pretty much all you want, especially if you are driving inside Manila with not too well-maintained roads. Steering is likewise light, which is once again perfect for your city driving. But don't worry when you do go up over to the highway, it really does tighten up by a little bit. So it doesn't really have that strange feeling of you might oversteer and end up in a ditch on the highway. My favorite thing about the GX3 Pro though is just how refined it is when it comes to noise vibration and harshness suppression. You see pretty much every single car in its class wouldn't do that well in NVH but this one it is pretty good. Uh, you barely get any wind noise in this car. You do get some tire noise though because of those triangle branded tires but when it comes to like vibrations you can barely feel it and that I guess is also an advantage of putting a less high-tech but four cylinder engine under the hood it's just inherently balanced and that's good especially for a car of its class but since the gx3 pro is a lot softer and a lot more comfortable compared to the geely cooler for example it the uh, handling isn't the best and it's okay but you know it's not happy you know it's not something that entices you to go a little bit faster over those bends and sharp curves my last complaint with the GX3 Pro are the choice of tires that Geely chose. So remember they put these uh, triangle branded tires which I've frankly never heard of. And the other day I was trying to go up a pretty steep incline. It was a parking ramp and it was raining pretty hard so it was super wet. And these tires have like zero grip in them. The traction control was already kicking in so much. It was already cutting power to my wheels. I know that the engine has more than enough power for that incline but it really just is the tires but don't worry no matter how hard the rain is when it's just like you know normal driving at grade driving not really gonna have any issues with it it's just when you like really push that tires over slippery ramps let's now answer the question we asked at the start of this video is the Geely GX3 Pro equally as impressive as the Geely Cool Ray and the rest of the Geely lineup well, honestly, I would say no because styling-wise, it's not the best. It doesn't have the best powertrain either, nor does it have the best materials in the interior. But given its comfort and its fit and finish, and most importantly, its price, which, by the way, is only 878,000 pesos with even a special introductory discount of 80,000 pesos, making this car only cost 798,000 pesos. I think with that in mind, this car is even more impressive compared to the other cars in Geely's lineup.